Hi, it's Sam teaching you microeconomics. Today we're going to be learning about demand. This is the most basic and necessary part of AP microeconomics, so let's get to the point. Supply. Do you know how supply works? Like sellers supply something, right? And demand. Demand is when consumers want, like you want to buy something that's reflected on a demand curve. The law of demand is when the price is cheaper, people buy more of it. So for example, you go shopping and find something on sale. For example, I bought this peanut butter O's. Yeah, in Korea, we have Oreo cereals. You should always buy Oreo cereals when you come visit Korea. But this is actually a peanut butter oreo cereal but i like the original ones but they were on sale look they were like 50 percent on sale so i had to buy this so the cheaper it is the more likely that you as a consumer will buy stuff that's the law of demand so when the price is lower the quantity demanded increases when something is expensive the quantity demanded will decrease holding all else equal you may come across the words like holding all else equal in economic it just means that only price changes and other factors like price of substitutes don't change just remember that holding all else equal just means that the only factor that changes is the factor just mentioned in the question Normally price so it means the literal price in numbers when I was in kindergarten this one of my favorite ice cream was like 50 cents yeah age difference right um, now it costs like one dollar and fifty cents in nominal price terms this sounds like it has increased its price so much but you also have to look at the relative price in a relative term, you should be considering the relative value of the price. So for example, when the ice cream cost 50 cents, the average hourly wage for people was like $5. Then, when I was in kindergarten, this ice cream cost 50 cents, but people's hourly wage was $5. But now, in 2020, $1.50, but hourly wage of people is $15. So if you look at it this way back then to buy this ice cream you would have to work 10 minutes to buy this ice cream now as well you still have to work 10 minutes to buy this ice cream so it's the same in relative terms this ice cream actually its value is the same so the value of this ice cream did not change so you have to look at the price in relative terms now how to draw a demand curve how do you draw a demand curve as we know that when the price is cheaper people buy more of that good we'll put that into a graph what is important to know is that price goes on the y-axis people kind of get confused on this uh, an easy way to remember is that p looks like this p a very long p price goes on the y-axis quantity goes on the x-axis like this and remember that the small numbers start from here one two three so as you move up the y-axis the value gets higher and as you move to the right side of quantity x-axis the quantity will get bigger as you move up and the price is higher as you move up the graph it seems so obvious but then the reason why i'm explaining this is because some students did not understand this so i'm just making sure that you understand so remember that when a good is really expensive then less people buy it number of the quantity sold is very low so maybe plot here for a high price but then when the price is really cheap like one dollar for i don't know what's near me this keyboard then a lot of people are going to be willing to buy this so lots of people so you connect these dots like these and then you will get a downward sloping demand curve a demand curve is always downward sloping just remember it this way demand downward sloping same d demand downward sloping is easy to remember right some questions may be asking why is the demand downward sloping there are reasons there are three reasons one is substitution effect why people buy less when price is higher is because they have other substitutes to buy when the price gets too high for example if coke's price double from one dollar to two dollars then we will buy a cheaper pepsi cola that is still one dollar that's why people buy less of cola when the price is higher they can find a substitute and buy the substitute instead and buy less cola yeah 
That's the substitution effect. Income effect. Why do people buy less when the price is too high? Imagine that all the product price is doubled. So you would have to pay like $2,000 for an iPhone and all the other good prices has doubled. Just imagine that. <laughs> we'll feel even more poorer than we already are. Our purchasing power has decreased. No money means no purchasing power. So when price of all goods double, it's like our income is just cut in half. So we'll have to buy less of the goods. That's the income effect. So income effect means that when the price is really high, it takes up a lot of amounts from our income, so people have to buy less of that good. Diminishing marginal utility, we learned this in the previous lesson. We talked about utility and we know what utility is, is happiness in numbers. So remember, the marginal utility is at its highest when you consume the first good. So when the quantity is small, like this, the first piece of pizza, remember, it gives you the highest utility. So your willingness to pay is the highest when you're consuming the first piece of pizza. And then your willingness to pay will decrease as you consume more quantity because it will give you less marginal utility. So that's called the law of diminishing marginal utility. Remember, that's why the people's willingness to pay, it decreases as the quantity increases. That's reflected on the demand curve, yes? So the reason why the demand is downward sloping is because of substitution effect, income effect, and diminishing marginal utility. Remember these three. Now what we have to know is that there is a difference between change in demand and the change in quantity demanded. So I will explain what they are. Remember how to label them? Price goes on the y-axis, quantity goes on the x-axis. Just recapping. Change in quantity demanded. It means a movement along the demand curve. Change in quantity demanded occurs when there is a price change. So when the price has decreased from $10 to $5, they are actually selling more. So from 10 to 20, like this. The price change will result in the change in quantity demanded. From $10, you can sell 10 quantities. With $5 price, you can actually sell 20 quantities. That's change in quantity demanded. And also, this is change in demand. Change in demand means a shift in demand. So either your demand will shift to the right or your demand will shift to the left. That's a change in demand. So to sum up, change in quantity demanded only occurs when there is a price change. It's a movement along the demand curve. And change in demand means it's a shift in demand curve. So the demand will shift either to the right or to the left. In regard to that, I will tell you what factors change the demand and shift the demand curve.